In a world that is increasingly digital, artificial intelligence plays a crucial role in all aspects of our lives, including international conflicts. A striking example is the use of AI by Israel. The army has, in fact, deployed a new military technology based on AI for the first time in its offensive in Gaza. But why is AI being used by Israel? How has it become a weapon of war? That's what we invite you to discover in this video. Let's get started. During the first 35 days of the offensive in Gaza, Israel reportedly attacked 15,000 targets. This is a colossal figure, especially when compared to previous military operations. It far exceeds the combined targets of the four previous major operations in the Gaza Strip. For example, during the Guardian of the Walls operation in 2021, Israel attacked 1,500 targets in 11 days. During the Protective Edge operation in 2014, which lasted 51 days, Israel struck between 5,000 and 6,000 targets. This is far from current figures. But how did the Israeli army achieve such a volume of bombing? Well, it's thanks to AI. The use of AI and its new tools is seen as a beacon of hope for the Israeli technology industry, according to the Israeli government, which is experiencing the backlash of the war. In 2022, the sector represented 18% of GDP. But since October 7th, about 8% of its workforce has been mobilized to fight. Avi Hassan, CEO startup of Nation Central, an Israeli technology incubator, explains, the war in Gaza generally brings threats, but also opportunities to test emerging technologies in the field. He adds, on the battlefield and in hospitals, some technologies used in this war had never been used before. Among the technologies used is Habsora, which translates to the gospel. This AI-powered computer program can process vast amounts of heterogeneous data from different intelligence branches. It is used to identify potential targets and also to estimate the number of civilian casualties in advance. Once the information is collected and the targets established, another AI, the Fire Factory, takes over. It optimizes the attack plans of planes and drones in real time. The system calculates the required amount of ammunition, assigns targets to different planes and drones, and determines the most efficient order for attacks. This is quite frightening. Thus, on May 13, 2024, UNICEF announced that 34,735 people had been killed in Gaza, including more than 14,000 children and 9,000 women. More than 78,000 people were injured, including 12,300 children. Thousands more are missing and likely trapped under the rubble. According to their estimates, a child is injured or killed every 10 minutes. Moreover, according to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees, nearly 1.9 million people have been displaced in Gaza since the start of the war. According to the media outlet Plus 972, which investigated this technology, Habsora is described by a former intelligence officer as a mass assassination factory, where quantity is emphasized over quality. Ground troops are also equipped with AI. Named Smart Shooter, it was designed by an Israeli company. It is essentially a sight attached to the soldier's weapons. According to the Israeli army, it makes every ordinary soldier a sniper. It automatically detects and locks onto targets, allowing the weapon to fire only when it has the best chance of hitting the target. Used in the fight against drones, the system is also capable of detecting humans. Thus, artificial intelligence allows the operator to identify a target, automatically track it, and ensure the shot. This technology has also reinforced Israel's status as a global leader in advanced weapon systems. In fact, the Wall Street Journal reported that the United States, Israel's main ally, which provides it with billions of dollars in military aid each year, trained its soldiers to shoot down drones using smart shooter technology. Artificial intelligence is also used in Gaza's underground tunnels. The Hamas group is accused of having dug a network of tunnels 
estimated at over 500 kilometers, which they use as a military strategy that Israel is determined to destroy. To observe these tunnels, the Israeli army uses small AI-boosted drones, manufactured by Roboticam, an Israeli company. These drones are encased in a robotic cage and sent directly into the tunnels. The goal is to map and detect humans. The drone then builds a 3D model of its environment and tracks its position without the need for a human operator to guide it. As the integration of artificial intelligence becomes an essential pillar of military modernization strategies worldwide, ethical questions arise. In fact, Habsora, mentioned earlier, is said to be defective according to several experts. Moreover, the algorithm does not explain how it reaches its conclusions. It is therefore difficult to verify the validity of a strike's outcome. For example, houses of Hamas members had been targeted by AI, but it did not consider that these strikes involved killing everyone in the building, even civilians. In a joint investigation, the Israeli media outlets Plus 972 magazine and Local Call interviewed several former and current Israeli intelligence officers who revealed that the army had lowered its expectations regarding the limitation of civilian casualties. For example, Israeli military intelligence approved the killing of hundreds of Palestinians to assassinate a single Hamas member. Mona Shtaya, a researcher at the Tarer Institute of Middle East Policy, based in Washington, explains to Middle East Eye, We are talking about thousands of civilians who have been killed due to the use of this technology. According to some experts, the widespread killings and destruction may have been intended to give the Israeli public the impression of victory. Others add that this objective could also be linked to the image of Israeli technology. In recent years, many debates have pitted those who defend the autonomy of artificial intelligence against those who insist on the need for human presence at all levels. On December 22, 2023, 152 countries voted in favor of a United Nations General Assembly resolution on the dangers of autonomous weapon systems. Four countries voted against, namely Belarus, India, Mali, and Russia, and 11 abstained. Thus, Resolution 78241 recognizes the significant challenges and serious concerns raised on humanitarian, legal, security, technological, and ethical levels by the use of new technological applications in the military field, including those related to artificial intelligence and the autonomy of weapon systems. However, there is still no legally binding instrument aimed at establishing clear prohibitions and limitations regarding autonomous weapon systems. But Israel's use of AI as a military and surveillance tool is nothing new and was not unexpected. It is part of a larger surveillance system under which Palestinians live under constant surveillance, as Monoshtaya reminds us. For example, in the West Bank, particularly in Hebron, the army uses cameras that scan faces throughout the city to help soldiers at checkpoints identify Palestinians even before they present their IDs. This has been in place since 2021. The same year, Amazon Web Services and Google signed a $1.2 billion agreement with the Israeli government known as Nimbus. Employees of these two companies then warned that the cloud service enables enhanced surveillance, illicit data collection on Palestinians, and facilitates the expansion of illegal Israeli settlements on Palestinian land. It is therefore clear that artificial intelligence is used as a weapon of war, whether on land, in the air, or even underground. It is present everywhere. Israel's use of AI in Gaza raises important questions about the ethics of AI in military conflicts. While AI may offer strategic advantages, it can also result in heavy human losses. Yet, Israel seems not only ready to use it, but also to improve it.